Hello, my dear friends. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me for another story time with Claus. This time, I'm going to read one of my favorite holiday stories, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Well, every Who down in Whoville liked Christmas a lot, but the Grinch, who lived just north of Whoville, did not. The Grinch hated Christmas. The whole Christmas season. Now, Please don't ask why. No one knows quite the reason. It could be that his head wasn't screwed on just right, or it could be perhaps that his shoes were too tight. But I think that the most likely reason of all may have been that his heart was two sizes too small. But whatever the reason, his heart or his shoes, he stood there on Christmas Eve hating the Who's. Staring down from his cave with a sour, grinchy frown at the warm lighted windows below in their town. For he knew every who down in Whoville beneath was busy now hanging a mistletoe wreath. Hmm, and they're hanging their stockings, he snarled with a snare. Tomorrow is Christmas, it's practically here. Then he growled with his grinch fingers nervously drumming. I must find a way to stop Christmas from coming. For tomorrow, he knew, all the Who girls and boys would wake bright and early and they'd rush for their toys. And then, oh, the noise, oh, the noise, 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 noise. <laughs> and that's the one thing he hated, the noise. Noise, noise, noise. Then, the Who's, young and old, would sit down to a feast and they'd feast and they'd feast and they'd feast, 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 feast. They would feast on who pudding and rare who roast beast, which was something the Grinch couldn't stand in the least. And then they'd do something he liked least of all. Every who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, would stand close together with Christmas bells ringing. They'd stand hand in hand and the who's would start singing. Oh, they'd sing and they'd sing and they'd sing. Sing, sing, sing. And the more the Grinch thought of the who Christmas sing, the more the Grinch thought, I must stop this thing. Why, for 53 years I put up with it now. I must stop this Christmas from coming. But how? Then he got an idea. Oh, an awful idea. The Grinch got a wonderful, awful idea. I know just what to do. The Grinch laughed in his throat. And he made a quick Santa Claus hat and a coat. And he chuckled and clucked. What a great Grinchy trick. With this coat and this hat, I look just like St. Nick. Ah, all I need now is a reindeer, the Grinch looked around. But since reindeer are scarce, there was none to be found. Did that stop the old Grinch? No. Nope. The Grinch simply said, If I can't find a reindeer, I'll make one instead. So he called his dog Max. Then he took some red thread and he tied a big horn on the top of his head. Then he loaded some bags and some old empty sacks on a ramshackle sleigh and he hitched up old Max. Then the Grinch said, Giddy up! And the sleigh started down toward the homes where the Who's lay a snooze in their town. And their windows were dark. Quiet snow filled the air. All the Who's were all dreaming, sweet dreams without care. When he came to the first little house on the square, this is stop number one, the old grouchy claws hissed, and he climbed to the roof, empty bags in his fist. Then he slid down the chimney, a rather tight pinch. But if Santa could do it, then so could the Grinch. He got stuck only once, for a moment or two. Then he stuck his head out of the fireplace flue, where the little who stockings all hung in a row. These stockings, he grinned, are the first thing to go. Then he slithered and slunk with a smile most unpleasant. Around the whole room he took every present, popguns and bicycles, roller skates, drums, checkerboards, tricycles, popcorn and plums, and he stuffed them in bags. Then the Grinch very nimbly stuffed all the bags one by one up the chimney. Then 
he slunk to the icebox. He took the who feast. He took the who pudding. He took the who's roast beast. He cleaned out that icebox as quick as a flash. Why, that Grinch even took their last can of who hash. Then he stuffed all the food up the chimney with glee. And now, grinned the Grinch, I will stuff up the tree. And the Grinch grabbed the tree and he started to shove when he heard a small voice that sounded like the coo of a dove. He turned around fast and he saw a small who, little Cindy Lou who, who was not more than two. The Grinch had been caught by this tiny who daughter who got out of bed for a cold cup of water. She stared at the Grinch and said, Santa Claus, why? Why are you taking our Christmas tree? Why? But you know, that old Grinch was so smart and so slick. He thought up a lie and he thought it up quick. Why, my sweet little tot, the big Santa Claus lied. There's a light on this tree that won't light on one side. So I'm taking it up to my workshop, my dear. I'll fix it up there and then I'll bring it back here. And his fib fooled the child. Then he patted her head and he got her a drink and he sent her to bed. And when Cindy Lou, who went to bed with her cup, he went to the chimney and he stuffed the tree up. Then the last thing he took was the log for the fire. Then he went up the chimney himself, the old liar. On their walls, he left nothing but hooks and some wire. And the one speck of food that he left in the house was a crumb that was even too small. Then he did the same thing to the other who houses, leaving crumbs much too small for other who mouses. He was caught or passed on, all the who's still a bed, all the who's still a snooze when he packed up his sled. Packed it up with their presents, the ribbons, the wrappings, the tags, and the tinsel, the trimmings, the trappings, 10,000 feet up the side of Mount Crumpet. He rode with his load to the tip top to dump it. Poo, poo to the who's, he was grinchly saying. They're finding out now that no Christmas is coming. They're just waking up. I know just what they'll do. Their mouths will hang open a minute or two. Then the who's down in Whoville will all cry, boo-hoo. <laughs> That's a noise, grinned the Grinch, that I simply must hear. So he paused, and the Grinch put his hand to his ear. And he did hear a sound rising over the snow. It, it started out low and it started to grow, but the sound wasn't sad. Why, the sound sounded merry. It couldn't be so, but it was merry, very. He stared down at Whoville. The Grinch popped his eyes. Then he shook. When he saw was a shocking surprise. Every Who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, were singing without any presence at all. He hadn't stopped Christmas from coming. It came. Somehow or another, it came just the same. And the Grinch, with his Grinch feet ice cold in the snow, stood puzzling and puzzling. How could it be so? It came without ribbons. It came without tags. It came without packages, boxes, or bags. And he puzzled three hours till his puzzler was sore. Then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. Maybe Christmas, he thought, didn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more. And what happened then? Well, in Whoville, they say that the Grinch's small heart grew three sizes that day. And the man of his heart didn't feel quite so tight. He whizzed with his load through the bright morning light. And he brought back the toys and the food for the feast. And he himself, the Grinch, carved the roast beast. <laughs> well, thank you so much, my friends, for spending this time with me reading this story. I hope you learned the message here. There really is a reason for the season. It's the love in our hearts that we share with each other, with our family, with our friends, with our neighbors, and even with people we don't know. 
because that's what's most important, sharing the love, the reason for the season. Till next time, my friends. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Godspeed. There's a reason for the season now. There's a reason we should all apply. There's a reason for that warm and cozy feeling. And what do you think about it, Mr. Claus? Peace on earth, goodwill towards men. Let kindness be your business then. Give more than you receive Then every day will feel just like Christmas Eve Ho, 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 milk and cookies